Hey, what's up guys, Bo HD here, and Apple has updated the iPad Pro line with the M1 chip. That is almost overkill for a tablet, but is still definitely appreciated. There's support for 5G if you get the cellular models, and if you spring for the large 12.9 inch variant, you get Apple's new Liquid Retina XDR display. This is a display that is only available in this big model, as of yet at least, and it's caused some serious delays because it's a brand new display technology but more about that later in this video. The new 12.9 inch iPad Pro, it starts at about $1,100 for the 128 gigabyte base model, and it just goes up from there. So keep in mind that this device is in the price range of Apple's new MacBooks and even approaches the cost of the newer iMacs. But I ordered mine because I am due for a new iPad. This is it, let's go ahead and unbox it. Lifting off the top of the box, we'll find the iPad Pro 12.9 inch sitting right on top. Underneath, there's a packet of paperwork that is hiding the 20 watt charging brick and USB-C charging cable. That is about it. Now, if we unwrap the iPad Pro from its protective plastic coating, we will find a very slender, well-constructed tablet. I went with the tried and true space gray color, but silver is also an option. Uh, this tablet is, is definitely large because of the large 12.9 inch display, which, um, actually does add some girth to the overall build because of this new mini LED display technology. But as someone who hasn't upgraded to a new iPad in years, it still feels really, really thin. It's definitely dense, but not too thick at all, in my opinion. I mean, it's only 6.4 millimeters thick, which is crazy thin. Upon first impressions, the 12.9 inch display, it looks great. It features a, a new mini LED backlit system composed of more than 10,000 super small LEDs that are divided up into 2,596 local dimming zones, which gives Apple precision into which areas are being lit up at any given moment. Apparently the technology is, has been custom made by Apple, um, but this new display is capable of being really, really bright. It has a peak brightness of up to 1600 nits. It supports the latest HDR standards, and it still features a 120 hertz refresh rate. Overall, it's really one of the best displays of any kind, at least on paper. Um, I'm looking forward to testing it out some more in everyday use. The other big improvement this year is the inclusion of the M1 chip that was released last year to power the latest Mac computers. It features an eight core CPU, eight core GPU, and 16 core neural engine that delivers up to 50% faster performance than the previous iPad Pro with 40% faster graphics. There's also a whopping 16 gigabytes of RAM in this 12.9 inch model. So I would say it's almost overkill for a device of this nature, but if you're a graphic design artist or you know a video editor who for whatever reason is editing video on an iPad, um, Basically, anyone who just runs hungry, power-intensive apps, I think you should really appreciate the in-speed improvements available with the M1 chip. But for most people just running basic apps, I do think the M1 chip is gonna be overkill. The last big feature we have has to do with the cameras, even though you still shouldn't be taking photos with an iPad, in my opinion. Apple has added an f2.4 12 megapixel true depth camera on the front and a 10 megapixel ultra wide camera sensor on the back that complements the f1.8 12 megapixel main camera sensor. So, you know, you're gonna be able to capture some really solid images with this new camera setup, even if you're gonna be using the iPhone in your pocket most of the time to, to capture photos. Now you can opt for a cellular model that supports 5G, uh, but my model just supports Wi-Fi. Other than that, those are really the, the big new changes with this year's iPad Pro 12.9 inch. I think if you have an iPad Pro that's a few years old, you could justify the upgrade, but even with this new display technology and the new M1 chip, last year's iPad Pros are still extremely capable. Like I wouldn't be rushing out to upgrade from a 2020 iPad Pro, uh, especially since there's talk of a potential design overhaul coming in the next year or two. With that said, let me know what your thoughts are of the new 2021 iPad Pro 12.9 inch. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe if you're brand new. As always, I'm BoHD from Slash.TV. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you right back here in the next one. See ya.